All right, so I guess we'll just continue with uh, more words and I'll write stuff down. And I guess I'll put the chart back up for, for you just, just to keep it easier. Uh, I guess like that. Go in here and go like that. So that that's fine. Yeah, so let's see. Let's think of some words. Um, so, okay, let's, let's ask you a question. What do you say in the morning when you uh, to greet somebody in Japanese? Ohio. That's right, Ohio. Do you know a more polite form of uh, Ohio? No, I heard there goes, uh, there's something. Sorry? There's something. No, it's, uh, it's Ohio. And for this one, they don't use des. They use uh, the older version of des, basically. Which is uh, which is gozaimas. Oh, Ohio gozaimas. So Ohio gozaimas. They say that in the morning. Ohio and if in a formal setting, like let's say in school, you would probably use that version. But like for someone you know closely, or let's say even maybe a workmate or something, you might use just Ohio or Ohio, you know. More casual. Ohio Kazaimas. And I've probably covered it before, but um, so let me I can write that down. Um, what should we call it? The other the other greetings for the day. Um, like during the middle of the day, what would you say? Do you know? Do you know what you would say in the middle of the day? Mm -hmm. That's right. You would say konnichiwa. You were there for Tiriwa. Yeah. So Konnichiwa, like that. Uh, I noticed some, a lot of people mispronounce it, they'll pronounce it like this. Like, <laughs> they'll just pronounce it like this, which is technically not correct. Uh, konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. It sounds almost the same, but it's actually Konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. Yeah. Instead of konnichiwa, it's konnichiwa. So you, it's a pretty you, subtle difference. You need to add the time to like pronounce the end. Yeah, it's just the mm here, right? In between the ni chiwa, ni chiwa, and mm. So there's konnichiwa. It's because it's coming from a uh, Chinese character for now. Mm -hmm. And uh, and day. I, I, I think I think uh, it's spelled. Am, am I writing that right? Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah. Yeah, so it's con Nichi M N Tabua. So can I look at the Kotaimas after Konichiwa? Uh Konichiwa, you don't usually use Gozaimas after that. It's usually is it it's because it's Konichiwa. It's it's technically part of a it's it's not actually Konichiwa originally it's by itself. It's actually Konnichiwa, o tenki mo ii desu ne, or something like that. O tenki wa ii desu ne, that kind of thing. Like, you, I think what they used to do is they actually used to say something after that. They wouldn't just say konnichiwa. Because konnichiwa, like, it's like a Japanese sentence. You have the subject with wa, saying that it's, uh, this is the subject of the sentence. Let's say, uh, I was talking about myself, I might say that I'm the subject, watashi wa. Or if I'm talking about my dog, then the dog becomes <laughs> the subject of the sentence. So I think it was usually before they would say something like "otenki," "otenki wa i desu so for example. Okay, try it out. So I was told was the main thing they would say. Uh, I don't think I can write this character anymore. <laughs> Yeah. Which 
It's a simple character. Yeah, he. He. I forget. It's bad that I don't remember, but that's. It's like cheese. Yeah, there you go. So, yeah, I see it once and then boom, I remember. Just because like, if you don't write all the time, you, you lose yeah, it gotcha. immediately. It's pretty bad. But anyway, so oh, the O is just for honorific, like uh, politeness, basically. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Uh, either step. You know what? Um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be surprised if even before they say this. They would have said, I'm sure it depends on the person, but it, I'm sh pretty sure they would say something like, uh, so thank you, Aedis. Nah. Yeah, you could say, nah. yeah. <laughs> Aedis, nah. But I mean, I think maybe even before that, it would be um, maybe Ogenki this guy's. Well, it, does, it depends. I mean, if you actually care, usually you would ask. How the person is, so you could say "o genki desu ka." It's also using this character. Oh, let's just uh, write it again. Yeah, basically, yeah. "O genki, o genki desu ka," and then you don't you don't need this. Here you don't need this e. "O genki desu ka." Put the ka here. I guess you could say o genki desu, and you just like have the way of saying it. The person knows you're asking a question, but it's not very. It's kind of weird. It's odd. It's more of an alternative way to say. It. It's maybe not as polite, maybe. But like the proper way, usually you add a ka at the end. O genki desu ka, like that. And then uh, if you're saying yes, I'm fine. So o genki desu ka, are you okay? Say yes, I'm fine. Genki desu, you would say. Or genki o, or something. Genki da yo, something like that. Genki da yo. Genki desu. Genki desu. Like that. And uh, I guess uh, I could write those down. So genki desu ka? Genki desu. And uh, you could say. After that, like, thank you for asking, sort of thing, it's okage sama de. Okage sama de. Okage sama de. You see, I'm not sure if there's a character for that. I don't, I don't think there is, but I'm gonna look it up. There may be an old one, or maybe Japanese people know more than me. Okage sama. I know sama will have a character. Yeah, I'm sure it does. Maybe it's the same as um, Shadow? Okage sama de. Yeah, I'm gonna check what this character is. Is this the character for? Yeah. Oh, that's what it is. Yeah, yeah. So it is kage. So I, I thought, I know that kage means shadow. I know sama basically is like a polite sort of thing, like like a polite uh, suffix. Like you know, chan or san, you know, is like a suffix for a person, like uh, mini san. And yeah. Martin san, you know? yeah. san, san. It's like saying Mister, but Sama is like with use for like a god or like, oh, uh, it's like a like a royalty or something like that or a king, you know? Yeah, exactly. Kami Sama is the god, so Kage Sama. So it's the shadow, you know, god I guess or <laughs> under the god's shadow. Kage Sama. Well uh yeah exactly like somebody high up like it means high like, like really high status um well the translation is under the god's chat i think it basically means that like it's similar to it sounds to me similar to like in islam when they say inshallah or something like if god wants it to be so or something like that but it's uh you know they have their own folklore their old culture you know, they have Shinto and so on, which is its own thing. So yeah, that would be the kanji. Okay, so you don't have to know. Th this character is good to know, though. This one is good to know. This Sama. Yeah. 
because it's used used a lot. Eventually, you'll need to know this one. Okay, okay, so I mean, it's good to know Kage as well. Kage is just uh, shadow, right? Kage, Kage Samade. Okay. And uh, later on in the day, do you know what you would say to greet somebody? So you don't know? Would you say later on in the or like in the evening? After Konnichiwa? No, you don't know the last one? Okay. So that's good. It's good people don't know stuff. I kind of worry if everybody knows everything. <laughs> I don't know how I have to teach. Well, for, for this, it's, uh, it's Konbanwa. Konbanwa. This is very similar to Konnichiwa. The only difference is instead of Nichi here, you have Ban, which uh, basically means Yoru, it means uh, nighttime. Yeah. Nighttime. Whereas Nichi means daytime, right? Day. This is night, basically. We can we can uh, refer to the word processor here to uh, see exactly what I mean. Kon, ban, wa. And this is the uh, this is one. They'll use this one for like bongo, like um, so bongo, bongo ha, bongo ha. Bangohan. Yeah, it's the same Bangohan. character as in Bangohan. <laughs> Bangohan. So, uh, Konbanwa is like good evening. And uh, this character, Bang, is used in Bangohan, but it, it's actually used the same meaning as, as this, which is a different character. Yoru. Yoru. Which means like. Uh, Evening, Night. yeah, evening or night time, right? What do you think in Chinese? This is also considered evening, right? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, they're both considered evening, basically. Um, this this one's used for this word, konbanwa, tonight. So good evening. And um, this uh, bangohan is for uh, dinner, basically. Because it's the, the food that you eat, gohan, which is food or rice, which that you eat in, at the nighttime, right? Gohan. So it's fun. Gohan. But you, if you're just gonna say nighttime, you wouldn't just you wouldn't use this character. You would use this character, and you would say yoru. Yoru gohan. <laughs> <laughs> yoru no gohan. Yeah, you could say that. Yoru no gohan. It's unusual. You would just say ban gohan usually, but you could say yoru no gohan. This is the character for go, by the way. Which is the same thing as all or uh, the honorific. When it's a character, it looks like that. Oftentimes, you don't see the character. I mean, it's kind of interchangeable. Sometimes I just see the hiragana. Sometimes I just see the character. Really. I don't know why. Sometimes it's go, and sometimes it's o, depending on the character. There's a reason for that. That's like I noticed. It's not a hundred percent, but if it's Chinese characters. It's more likely to have gold, like especially if it's coming from China. Mm, yeah. But if it's in front of like something else, like it's just Japanese hiragana or something, or let's say it's a foreign word, and I don't know what they're going to use honorific for if that's foreign, but just in case it was, they would use the uh, O pronunciation instead of the Go. The Go is for, or sometimes Gyo even, it's even Gyo. It's used for uh, more traditional or older words and, and stuff like that. Yeah. Go on. But like for example, uh, like more common th and also things that I guess have like a I don't know because for example uh, if it's a chopstick it's using o ohashi ohashi and I've noticed that o is the one that's probably used more often. Go is usually it's like something like some older word or something like that. Uh, like for example, I don't think I think I think it's also how you use it. Like for example, if you're talking oh, 
Ohashi? Ohashi is chopstick. Uh, chopstick. Oh. Ohashi. Well, like, like I think if you were, um, for example, gonna just put it on there for for respect, right? Because that's how it's done, like the O or the Go, and you're gonna say like like a wedding or something like. I don't think you say O kick con. I think you would say Go kick con. You know, something like that. Like it kind of has that feeling. Like if you have those kind of Chinese characters, if it's more like less casual. Then I find that it's going to use go, and if it's from Chinese characters, yeah. Whereas if it's le more ca casual and less Chinese characters, then you're going to see the o. I find. Okay. Um, so calm down. Well. The interesting thing I notice we don't often say in English, but they say often in Japanese, is twilight. Like they'll mention that time twilight, which is around the time the sun is setting. Mm -hmm. So in between... No, right after, right after it sets. Yeah, or right after it sets. So like, right between the afternoon and the evening, like they'll, they'll say that like at the time, usually it's around 4 or 5 o'clock or something, depending on the time of the year. Uh, and that's called Yugata. And that uses the Yoru, the character for Yoru, I think. Oh no, a different character. Actually a different character. It uses a even simpler, older character. Yeah, yeah. So actually the, the character in Katakana that's Ta, Looks just like this character for Yugata. Um, anyway, this means twilight. The the gut the kata here. It kind of means way, way, way. So, I think it, and I think this is a kind of uh, old character for moon actually. Yeah, I think this is a kind of moon character. Usually, the regular moon character is different though. The regular one is it looks like this. There, this one. Yeah, it's key. Which is probably good to know. Okay. Um, and I think, I, I don't know if we mentioned this, I think we did this. Itadakimasu, we did that, right? Itadakimasu. We did that, yeah, that's, that's a good. Uh, we, yeah. So, yeah, the other ones here are uh, Asagohan. Asagohan is which is breakfast. Is breakfast, yeah, asagohan. And uh, ohiru gohan. Gohan, or uh, just hiru gohan, I guess would be fine. He, ohiru is um, it's basically lunchtime slash afternoon ish. Yeah, it's like basically lunchtime. Ohiru. Mm. Ohiru no. Jikan, I guess you could say, or Jikan. Yeah, Jikan. Jikan is good too, huh? Jikan is um, time. Jikan. Jikan. Mihi, is there some words that you like want to know? Because I noticed you have you have a pretty good vocabulary already. Uh, I think that. Different from Chinese, uh, we use now is the uh, Chinese. So using Taiwan, they use this this kind of. Oh yeah. Uh, I'm now in China. We use the same formula. Yeah, I know the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's different. <laughs> yeah, that makes it harder for sure. Yeah, because they uh, it's definitely simplified. I've seen them before. So we, we can talk about uh, maybe uh, some cultural cultural. Culture about Japanese, uh, like the, uh, their clothes, their traditional clothes, their, uh, their manual place, what beautiful, like the view, beautiful view. For sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, you, actually, you know, it is coming a lot from uh, China. Um, especially the, you know, the Tang Dynasty in yeah, China? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they do very well, and they change them. Yeah, basically what the, the Japanese, I think they, they took a lot, they always take a lot from other cultures yeah, yeah. and modify to their own. I think Japanese command the, the culture and the right culture together and they do quite well. Yeah, I, 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 I don't even think that they do it on purpose. Like, I don't think that the idea was to combine East and West. I think the idea is more just take whatever <laughs> and make it work for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, they have a certain way of doing, yeah, they have a certain way of being... And actually, there there a lot of what they took and they keep they maintain. It's from old Chinese, 
wisdom, but Ch even in China they don't keep it. They yeah. don't preserve it. They they keep it in uh, in Japan, like uh, <laughs> like you know, like caring for your elders and you know respecting like different traditions and being clean and orderly and uh, having lots of politeness and uh, stuff that in China you know they just like China. don't care anymore. But uh, a lot of it was learned from China. And even the buildings, like the, uh, the architecture. Yeah. Um, the temple. The yeah, those, I guess, okay, it's a good, it's a good since we're going to talk about that stuff. We can use some words from, from those subjects, right? So that we get some vocabulary going. And I could try to get some afterwards. We'll do some phrasings, like some sentence structure. So. Uh, Uh, so let's see, can you read that? Otera. Otera. Otera is a temple. So in Japan, what's interesting is they, um, they, um, they don't just have one main religion, they actually have two, and it's not that some people follow one, some people follow another. Actually, they're not very religious in reality. What it is, is they basically like the format of the religion for certain contexts. Like, for example, if it's a funeral, then they're going to go to the Otera. The Otera over here. Um, yeah, they go to Otera to... Otera. Um, I I think that's that's not that would be see that's not okay. I think that's that's Jinja. 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 Yeah. That's Jinja. The temple is more like where they that have like a funeral. People pray to monk to Buddha and stuff like that. But and they have like incense that they sell you there and they have like usually a Buddha statue or something. Whereas Jinja is I think more what you guys are talking about. Which is the Shinto shrine? Yeah, yeah. That's the Jinja. Jinja. So that's the character for Kami. Kami. Kami is in God, right? There. Odera for what? Sorry? Odera. Otera? This is a temple. A temple for what? Usually it's Buddhist, Zen Buddhist temple. Buddhist. Yeah, because they have a strong influence. Oh, okay. so Zen Buddhism. Jinja is for Kami? Yes, exactly. And then for any, anything else, the Buddhist. Yeah, so this would be the Shinto. Uh, Shinto, Shinto is this one here. Shinto. Shinto. So once again, you have God, and this time you have Wei over here. Uh, for in Jinja, this this what does this mean? This like mean like structure or something? Building, building temple. I'm not temple shrine. Yeah, just shrine. That's the only meaning it has. Okay, so it's just that's literally what it means. It's just usually not used by itself. So uh, cool. Jinja. So yeah, Shinto. You have the Jinja. And uh, Bukyo, Bukyo, that's Buddhist, Buddhism, Bukyo, you have uh, the Otera. And see, Bukyo, you notice this, this basically I think means, uh, well, it pretty much means Buddha. And this Kyo here is what's used in like religions. And it's like anything that kind of really means like religion or religion-esque will have this character. Uh, so... I'll show you the character for religion itself is sh Shukyo would be the characters for that. And you see it's the same thing. Shukyo. If you were to say Christianity, you'd go Kurisuto Kyo. Christo this is Christo. Oops. Uh, where is the I can, uh, I can grab it from here. Go with katakana. 
be like that, Christo Kyo, and then the other one would be, uh, is it Yodaya Kyo, I think it's called? Judaism? Yodaya Kyo, if I'm not getting that wrong. Anyway, basically, uh, they all have, oops, they all basically have, uh, I don't know what I'm, <laughs> Yoda, okay, I'm just trying to remember what it's called, Jewish. Yodaya. Oh, it's not Yoda. It's just Yodaya. Okay. Yeah, see, it's probably a pronunciation from uh, Hebrew. Yeah. Yodaya. As in Judea. Okay. That's where it's coming from, Judea. Southern Palestine. So they call it uh, basically uh, the religion, religion of Judea. So, Yodaya Kyo. So the, the main ones are actually going to be uh, Shinto and Bukyo. And uh, obviously I think the main kind of, well there's actually all kinds of Buddhism, it's not just one kind. I mean I, I said Zen Buddhism. And yeah, Zen Buddhism has probably the biggest influence on their culture from the Buddhism, but the actual temples themselves can be all kinds. Like, it, there's all kinds of Buddhism. Like, there's ones, I think, for Amida Buddha. Yeah, Amida. <laughs> well, there's, we get, start to get into a lot of terms here because... Um, Maybe it's, what is it, Am Amida-sama or something? Let's check this out, make sure I got it right. But yeah, <clears throat> yeah, that's the one. See, it's actually in uh, Indian, it's Amitabha. 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 Yeah, Amitabha. Amitabha. But in the Japanese, it's Amida. Oh, like <laughs> the so if you go to uh, Amida Sama, then you, well it doesn't actually, is it listed? Well I have to actually write it down and all together the same kind of character, Amida Sama. Well it doesn't have it as a whole thing unfortunately, but anyway it doesn't matter. I know that this is a uh, I mean that people know what that is. So there'll be some temples that will be for that. You know, and then there'll be other ones that are more for uh Shakasama. Shakasama. Pretty sure that's how you uh Shakasama. Which is um the tr the um uh, whatchamacallit? Historical Buddha. Yeah. Here you go, Gua Guatama Buddha Shakyamuni. That's what they call him in, uh, you know, where we literally call the Buddha or whatever in history. So it's Shaka. Some are, some are for um, Guanyin, which here is called in Japanese Kanon. 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 Yeah, there you go. It's called. Yeah, there's, so there's. Those are like the main ones I can think of that are like popular gods, basically. Tenjo. With Kanon. But I don't know if I did that right. Yeah, maybe that was right. Kanon. that right yeah kind of actually it's interesting because it has the character for uh, sound in it this character could be on or oto oto means sound yeah. 
on is the onyomi for oto. So the god can guanyin in Chinese or canon in uh, canon in the Japanese <laughs> has the word has the word for sound in there, the character for sound. So there must have been something about her voice in the story or some kind of power that she has with her her voice or her sound that she makes. Or canon, or he makes them. It's canon if it's female, right? No. No, it's male? I'm not sure. <laughs> not sure. I think, yeah, I think it's, it's time, not defined. Time transfer. Kind of, yeah, I think you can change from one to the other. He or she can change. Like, it's like <laughs> it's like a super god, I guess. <laughs> okay. Uh, and so the Shinto, Shinto. So they use Shinto for like you said. So Shinto will they'll go to the thing, they'll put the cash, they'll put some coin in there and they'll ring, ring the bell, bell and they'll, like, they'll clap their heads twice and they'll go like this. And actually often before you go into them, there's going to be, uh, it's like a little fountain or something. Sake. Not sake, yeah, but just wine. water, just like pure water, like supposedly purified water, either from like some stream that comes nearby that's supposedly clean or that they cleaned it or something i don't know and then you're you're supposed to wash your hands with this water before you you go to the to, to the temple to pray or whatever that supposedly washes your spirit or something like that they all have this it's all very traditional it's very interesting yeah. uh, i wonder if we could see what those look like those are because uh, it's it's pretty unique uh, Shinto uh, hand wash Shinto. Yeah, these things basically. Uh, okay, I'll look at this one. Like this picture though. Maybe this is kind of cooler. Something like that. Basically, it pours out water and. Um, pours out water and basically you have these things that you scoop the water with and then you sort of just pour it on your hand. Actually, I don't know what, what this is for. <laughs> Let me drink or wash hands. No, it's for washing your hands before you go to the temple to pray or to By put the coin in. So it's for you to wash in your, your spirit or something. Your <laughs> it's kind of symbolic, I think. Yeah, maybe. Honestly, I'm not like religious or I wouldn't go and pray to Shinto, I wasn't asking for stuff, so I wasn't really that, I just, but if I did it, I would do it just like, okay, this is their culture ritual thing, oh, actually, but I think, I have about that, they take it more seriously, yes, they become married, and they become mate, <laughs> well, see, yeah. with Shinto, so yeah, so Shinto is like the kind of thing like, oh, I want to get married, or I want my daughter to be married, or I want a family to have some peace, or it's all these kind of things, they, you know, like wish for, yeah, you know, so or they, they can't do what they want. <laughs> yeah, just like, well, it's usually for good, wishing for good things for yourself, for your family. You know, it's very old, traditional culture, and I guess it's similar to when they go to uh, the Buddhist temple. It's a little bit different. Like rather than asking the gods for help or whatever, or hoping for help, it's kind of seeking advice or wisdom from the gods or Buddha or something yeah. or maybe the monk will t help you or something or sometimes they do different rituals like um, when the baby after the baby is born we went to the temple I'm pretty sure actually it was the I'm not sure if it was the Buddhist temple or the shrine well this is a good question we could look this up but basically I, I know that there's a ritual for this because we did this ourselves in Japan um, Japanese birth cleansing. It's kind of like, you know, baptism or something, but it's not birth cleansing ritual. Let's see what they call it. Ancient rituals are just boring. No. Oh, I don't know this. No. I don't know. At least the great purification rituals. I 
still from birth onward. Yeah, it doesn't go in specifically. Japanese birth ritual. When Japanese tradition of uh, children are born. Naming ceremony, 17 days. See, there's a lot of stuff. Here, this is the one. Omiyama iri. Omiya, omiyama iri. So, omiyama iri. Um, I want to look up the characters for that. Yes. Yeah, they have a lot of stuff like that. Omi, um, uh, when the Japanese well, after a month, if someone died, they will ask the monk to their house and to to bus. Oh, oh, yeah. Omiya Mairi is what it's called. Omiya Mairi. Yeah, Omiya Mairi. So it just means a shrine visit, and you just you do that at thirty. As it says thirty. When boys and girls are 31 and 33 days old, respectively. So boys, when boys are 31 days old and girls are 33 days old, they go to the shrine, Omiya Mairi. Yeah, that's actually very interesting. Uh, but they have a lot of things like that, like a lot. Omiya Mairi. And every single, I think we discussed this on a previous case, like every single little village has its own festival that it runs different times of the year so and then there's like national festivals as well like there's a lot of traditions that's the thing about Japan you want to talk about it and then there's just so much so much to talk about like there's so much information there so so what I want to do is I want to get into some phrasing so we can do practice some um, some grammar and so we can actually put some words together because it's great to have all this vocabulary but you want to be able to uh, put it together in words so I was trying to think of some words some examples we can create um, maybe we can do something sort of related to what we were talking about okay so we can just use some some more verbs so I want to go, go into some more verbs because um, I noticed I didn't cover, because I covered a lot of adjectives just because it's easy, but it's probably good to cover verbs. So we're going to do some, some more verbs then. Um, okay. okay, let's just go with some verbs. So, although I mentioned them before, we can kind of list out some verbs. So we got suru, uh, which means to do. Okay, suru, and uh, this can be conjugated in many ways, and it's it's kind of irregular verb. That's why it's conjugated in a funny way. So the regular verb is, uh, I mean, the regular form for this irregular verb is suru, but the um, polite form is shimasu. Suru shimasu. shimasu. So suru is, if you're saying it regular form, so not polite. Mm -hmm. And then shimas is polite. That's why it's irregular because it kind of changes a lot. Yeah. Um, but it mostly changes to a form similar to this, like something she something. Suru shimas. Um, if you're saying in regular form that you are doing it right now. Shiteiru. Shiteiru. Sorry, it's wrong. Shiteiru. It's shiteru. Shiteru is something else. That's that means to know. That's another. That's another good and important verb. It's shiru. Shiru. That's the uh, character for it. This one has no character. It's just shiru. It has no character for it. This shiru has this character. It looks like this. Shiru means to know, and that's what it is shiteru is means to know. It's actually used a lot. Shiteru, I know it. You could just say like someone you know. Shiteru. But if you're saying it more politely, of course you would make it shiteimas. I know. Shiteimas means I know. Shiteru means I'm doing it. 
している。If you're saying、um, した、this is different from this、した、した means down, right? With the character. It's not that. It's pronounced exactly the same way, but it means I did it, like as in the past. Shita. And if you were to use the、um, polite form of shite, it would be shiteimas. Shiteimas. And the polite form of shita would be shimashita. Shimashita. So, suru, shimas. しているしていますしたしました And it seems, seems so important, like this little tsu, like I was saying before, it changes the meaning. So, し,し,している is one thing, but している is another thing. It's almost the same characters except this little tsu here, which changes everything. So, していますは I know it. しています means I'm doing it. Uh, so, this one would be shita. But I, I never hear people saying shita. Instead, you would hear people probably say, because it would be hard to understand, you say shita. That's why people don't probably use it. Shiteita is probably more likely to be heard. Shiteita means I was knowing it. Instead of saying I, 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 I knew it, you would more likely to hear I was knowing it. Which is shiteita. And you can use the same thing in,、um, with suru. It becomes、um, shiteita. 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 And then the polite form is shiteimashita. 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 Shiteimashita would be for I was knowing it in the polite form. Okay. So, another very, very useful verb is in just an alternative for suru, which is yaru. Yaru. Yaru also just means the same thing to do, but it's usually used more for like, like play or something like that. Like you can also use it for doing anything, but it's often used for play, like playing a sport or something. So, yaru. Yari mas is how you. And this is the way the yaru is conjugated, is the regular way to conjugate. See, with suru, it's a bit strange because the regular form is suru, yet everything else is she something, right? She mas, whatever. But for yaru, it's more like normally the way, the way we do it becomes ri mas, right? So yaru becomes yari mas, right?、Uh, yata is the past, right? Yatta, you also hear this, you know, if someone's happy, you know, they accomplished yata. something. Yatta.、Oh. You know, yatta means I did it. Yatta. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> yatta, I did it, right? I did it, yeah. Or whatever. Yatta. So, and then polite form though would be yarimashita. Yarimashita ne. You did it. Yarimashita. I did it. やっている。Oh, sorry, it's not right. <laughs> やっている、yeah. やっている means I'm doing it. You can say that、uh, polite. やっています。やっています。やっていた。やっていた。I was doing it. やっていました。I was doing it. See, so you see, that's how you conjugate. There are more conjugations, though, than this. But this is some really、uh, bread and butter, and like both the polite and the regular form of like a few conjugations here, four or three or four conjugations here. Okay.、Um, so, yeah, and another, yeah. Let's do one more conjugation, which is yaro. Yaro. Bakayaro. But this is different than <laughs> bakayaro. Because yaro, I think the bakayaro, I think it's just yaro, like, like this, without the. So it actually makes a difference. If you say yaro like this, it's, you're kind of saying do it. But it could be taken as kind of rude. 
But if you're going like this, it means let's do it. But it's regular, it's not polite form, so it has to be someone you're close with or on the same level. So basically, you can just try to yaro. Yaro. So you actually have to. Yeah, so you have to extend. It's yaro. It totally changes the meaning. So the yarimasho would be the polite. This is the safest thing to say. Yeah. In this case, yarimasho. So and with the uh, with sudo verb, th those conjugations work like shio, shio for regular form and shimasho. Oh, what the eido is more your what what the difference? Hmm. What the difference between the eido? Oh, okay, yeah. So that's a good question. I covered it before. Sorry. No, I was supposed to say maybe Martin knows because because uh, here it's shio, and yeah, here it's shima sho. So here you don't actually get a pronunciation of yo at all. It's just yeah, it's a combination like Martin said. So sho, this becomes sho. So you can use. Um, you can go back to the the chart. We can use um, ya, you, and yo, yo in combination with characters like shi or ki. Oh. So if you have, or even ni, so when they come together, or chi. To Basically, I think pretty much, except for e over here, everything on this. Can basically because it's ki, shi, chi, ni, he, mi, and ri. You can combine them with ya, yu, or yo to get new sounds like kya, kyu, kyo, sha, shu, sho, cha, chu, cho, nya, nyu, nyo, hya, hyu, hyo, mya, nyu, myo, and ya, ryu, ryo. You can use with any of those this ya yu yo to get new sounds but it's the same it's the different when it's small and it's big if it was to write I covered this previously but it doesn't matter <laughs> let's cover it again so like if I was to write like in this case as you can see shi yo and this is a big one here it's pronounced shi yo right and with the extra extension here shi yo shi yo shi yo and here with the little yo, yeah. it's not pronounced shio, it's pronounced sho. sho. Yeah. So it becomes kind of an extension of the shi and it's changing it, changing the sound. And here with the extension of the u, with the u, it's sho. That's another thing, when you have an u here to extend the o sound, it's not a u sound that it makes, it makes just an o, continues the o sound. So shio here or shimasho. 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 Okay. So another another one for um, so let's say you're playing a sport or playing a game, you're gonna probably use yaru or doing something with someone. And but if you're let's say playing a musical instrument, you're not gonna use that word, you're gonna use something else. If you're playing a musical instrument, it's hiku. Hiku. Hiku has many characters, as you can see, for it. Um, it could also mean pull. Hiku, like to pull something. But I think it's a different character, depending on what you mean. Hiku. So okay, let's try to see if you could do some of this. So we'll test you a little bit. See if you can do some conjugation on hiku. And I'll give you a hint that it works just like yaru. It works the same way as yaru. So if you can, so for example, here you have yaru. It's just r regular, uh, regular form of the verb, right? Uh, and the tense is the tense is basically to do, you know, or I'm going to do. And this is a polite form yadimas. So with hiku, is the regular. You know, to do form uh, and the regular Hari politeness. Hari oh, you're close. Hari. No, no, no. You were closer before. The only difference here is the big difference, big hint Hari here. 
but here you got a ru and here you have a ku. So the change in sound here goes from a ru to a ri. So what would you think a ku turns into? Hikimasu. Yes, you got it. Hikimasu. Sweet, that was very good. So you have any? Uh, you can think of any of the other conjugations, like let's say past. Yes. That's right. He Yes. Hikimashita. Perfect. Hiteru. Yeah, you could say that. Hiteru. Hiteimashita. Hiteimashita. Hiteita. Hiteimashita. Hiteimashita. I think this one you didn't say about Hite Imasu. Hite Imashita. That's right, yeah. And uh, how about this one? Or this one? No. Oh, you're close. He. Cool. Yes. Hiko. Yes, Hiko. Yeah, there no, you got it. That's fine. Hiko. Nice. So, would you can you you know what the polite form of that is? You're close. You're close. You're close. Hikimasho. Yes. Hikimasho. Hikimasho. Let's pull. <laughs> Don't really hear, it, but I'm sure you could say that. It's fine. Hikimasho. I've heard of it. I've heard of hikimasho before. <laughs> really? Let's anime. pull. Yeah. Probably an anime. Yeah, I could yeah. see this. You have to pull it together, like with some story. I could see that happening. They have to pull the gate open together or something. You know, who knows? Hikimasho. Okay. Is there any other good verbs we can think of? Well, there's a bunch of verbs. It's too many verbs. Uh, I'm just trying to think of more prioritizing the verbs a little bit. Um, to do, to play. Okay, oh, this is a nice simple one. I saw both. So this literally just means to play. Like, you know, I said you can use yaru for play. Mm -hmm. This one literally means play. Like, have fun, play, kids play, kind of play. I saw both. And for this hiku, right, uh, uh, there's different situations. So this one means pull. This one, like, for example, you'll see this character, like, um, like this, hiku, or maybe even hiki. But um, basically, on a door, on a door handle, like pull. Pull the door. Pull. What? Push is osu. So, osu. Push. Push. Uh, interesting, and then there's certain times they're going to combine verbs to make new words. Like, uh, and that's used a lot, doing that a lot. They do that a lot in Japanese. So, hiki dashi, I think. Hiki dashi. This I think means to pull, as in to pull out cash or something. Uh, I wanna I wanna confirm that though. Hikidashi. Or withdraw. Yeah. So if you when you're withdrawing cash from your ATM machine, it's called hikidashi. And so dashi here means to uh, to let out. Yeah, to take take out. Or to let out basically. Um, and hiki, or I guess the the right way to say it would be dasu would be the verb hiki dasu dasu to take out to get out to put out yeah. etc dasu and uh, hiku as you know is to pull so when they combine them together hiki dasu so to pull and to, and get out basically yeah. is withdraw so they'll make new new verbs or new words by just combining them. Yeah. 
exactly. Actually, this one, osu, is a good one. They, they use it for a lot of word combination. One, other, one example I could think of, oshitsukeru. Oshitsukeru. Which I think means to force something. You know, because it's the combination of to push and to uh, attach, basically. So, oshitsukeru, you're forcing an attachment, you're forcing it, I guess, or you're pushing the attachment on it, so you're forcing it. Oshitsukeru, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Oshitsukeru. And this could be easily confusing, thinking with another word. Yeah, see, to press, to push, to force. This oshitsukeru could be confused with another word, which sounds similar, but means completely different thing. Which is, so this is oshitsukeru, which means to push or to force something. And it's combining the character for osu, which means to push, and skeru, which means to add or attach something. Uh, but this could be confused for another word, which is that you hear often, ochitsukeru, or ochitsuku, I should, I should just say. Oh yeah, that's another, th another conjugation I didn't mention, is... But well, we can do that later because that's kind of confusing. But I'll, I'll explain it as we go. So this one, ochitsuku, it actually means to calm down. So it's totally different than, than oshitsukeru or oshitsuku. Tsukeru, I guess, is a good way to put this in this form. Now, what's the difference between... Because uh, this, this could also be a word. I didn't write it down, but it could also be oshitsuku. Oshitsuku. Actually, this is a good question. Uh, Oshitsuku, will the character... Yeah, it still comes up. So Oshitsuku, you usually wouldn't use it in this form, but I'm just putting it there for your knowledge, your understanding. Mm -hmm. So Oshitsuku is literally the act of forcing in general. Okay? But Oshitsukeru is the act of specifically forcing or pushing something coming from somebody, like willingly. Whenever you have this conjugation where the, the, for example, the ku turns into keru here, or in a, another case, osu would become seru. So for example, the, the you have osu, right? Which means the general act of pushing, osu. Or oseru, oseru means that you're pushing, or you're going to push, or the act of somebody in particular pushing, like it's, it's more specific. It's not just the general act of pushing. It's putting effort into pushing. You know, that's the difference. So that's why this oshitsukeru force to force something is usually not just used in the general form. It's usually used because somebody is doing it, and therefore we're gonna. Uh, connote effort here. Keru. Oshitsukeru. Somebody is pushing. Whereas if you say, in this case, if you say Oshitsuita, for example, or Oshitsuita, this would probably be a mistake, but for example, let's say you said Oshitsuita, it means, I guess you could say that, it means it was forced, but you're not really denoting who forced it, so, or how it was forced, so it's kind of strange. That's why usually you would probably hear instead Ochitsuketa, somebody forced it. It was forced by somebody or something, you know. Ochitsuketa, somebody forced it. Basically. Ochitsuku comes from the two other two other verbs. Ochiru, oh sorry, ochiru, not ochiru. Ochiru, which means to fall, like as in a fall down. It's also a good verb to know, ochiru, fall. And tsuku, tsuku. This form of tsu, I'm pretty yeah, I'm pretty sure this form of tsuku is like. Um, I think it also means like attached or hold it on. Whereas this form of tsuku, with this character, is like adding. But I mean, they have very they have very overlapping meanings. Sure. Tsuku. So you can see the different forms of tsuku. So this one to arrive at, to reach, to sit at. So to sit at, 
Yeah, kind of similar to attached or on. Yeah, it means on. And then you have this here. Uh, okay, here you go. So this one literally means to be attached, like I thought, to be connected with, to remain, to bear, to side with, to possess, to be lit, to be given, to be sent, to be lucky, to become. So yeah, so that's. Many. Yeah, there is many. There's many. It's just Tsuku is very. Uh, this is something else though here. Okay. Yeah, it's one you hear often, and this is the most common one, obviously, here. Tsuku, this is the one that you need to know the most. Is it used in Chinese? Tsuku? Nor this character? No, Not the same meaning, right? Tsuku. But anyway, here it means to be attached. And the other main one that you, I, I notice a lot. I mean, these are all used, obviously. But this one as well. It's good. Oh yeah, okay, I remember now. Sorry, this one is. This one is like suita, like I uh, I got somewhere, I arrived somewhere. Sorry, that's what this means. Sorry about that. So yeah, so this one means tsuku to arrive at or to get to somewhere. Yeah. And this one is uh, this one is attached or to, to be hooked or connected to it. Yeah, that's a better word. Connected to it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's what it is. So anyway, so this one is uh, ochiru means to fall. Tsuku, it means to get there. So ochi tsuku is you're kind of falling and arriving or falling and sitting down it's kind of like you're calming down it means you're relaxing you're taking it easy that's what's ochitsuku yeah it's calm down so like let's say you're kohun shiteru no this is kohun you know this eh kohun 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 yeah Kohun. Oh, that's in Chinese? What? Uh, it's in Chinese? Meaning is the same, but the Chinese is not the same. We have one symbol. That's why we can't talk about this. Yeah, so in Japanese it's Kohun, so it's uh, Kohun. 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 Kohun shimasu. So you can combine the suru verb to certain um, nouns. So this kohun is actually a noun. Yeah. It means excitement, right? Yeah. And if you combine it with suru, it becomes kohun suru means to be excited. Or, yeah, basically to be excited. And of course, you can conjugate it in every single way. Kohun shimasu. Kohun shimashita. Yeah. So. For example, kohun shisugitara ochi tsuita ho ga i desene or something like that. Don't you think it's exciting? Yeah, so exactly. If Sugi, sugiru is also a good verb. I should put that up. Sugiru. Sugiru oh, means too much. Too much, exactly. Go too much. So you can you can use this combined with suru, and it becomes shisugiru. You can combine it with any verb actually. It doesn't matter. But if you went shisugiru like this, it means to do too much. Shisugiru, yeah. So kohun shisugitara. So sugiru, we can have the right character here. Sugiru. Kohun shisugitara. So if you too excited, this tara here basically means if it happened, or it also means it did happen. So, kohun shisugitara, ochitsuita, 
Hogai. So I showed this, I think, I, were you here that time? I think you were here. Hogai. Uh, let's just go like this. Yeah, like that. Hogai this. So, tahogai just means it's what we should do. Or it's better what you do. I suggest you should do. So, ochitsuita hogai. So it's, it'd be good to calm down. Ochitsuita hogai. Desne, you know, it is, isn't it? Kohun shi sugi means to get too excited. Kohun shi sugi tara ochitsuita hogai desne. Kohun shi sugi tara ochitsuita hogai desne. Okay. So that's a sentence for you. And the, the tada is actually very easy to uh, conjugate. You can do with any of the verbs, like I showed you earlier. It's just the same as uh, the past form. So in this case, hitta. Hitta means I pulled it. And hittara means if I pulled it, or I did pull it, and then, you know, it's, it's usually like, it's like an if. Kind of like an if, like hitara ko ni naru. Like ko ni naru means uh, this happens. This was what will happen. So hitara um, We have to think of what we're pulling. So let's say kami no ke, kami no ke, kami no ke. This means this means the hair, hair on your head. Kami no ke, so this is, you know, hair ke, kami no ke, yeah. So kami no ke, oh, kami no ke, oh, hitara itaku naru. Itaku naru, so, itaku means, uh, it's actually a, um, yeah, it's a feeling adjective, I guess. It's an adjective called itai. 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 Which means, ow, it hurts. Itai. Itai. So, kami no ke, the hair on your head. Kami no ke. O hitara. Hitara is uh, using hiku. Hitara. Itaku naru. Itaku means it be. It, like I showed earlier, you know, itai, the e becomes ku when you're gonna conjugate. It's gonna hurt, yes. So, naru is also a very important verb. And let's conjugate naru. Naru. Narimasu. Can you do the next one? Narimashita. Close. So for this one, it's natta. Yeah, when you do it in polite, uh, regular form, natta. And it's important you know that because if you say naita. Naita, it's something else completely. Naita means I cried. Actually, uh, I think it would be naita, right? Uh, or am I wrong? Naita. No, it was right at the beginning. Naita. So naita is a uh, cry. Which would be nakimashita, right? Like this in the polite form. Nakimashita. Which is, comes from uh, naku. So you can use a lot of um, adjectives combined with naru. Naru. So, like the we can combine the uh, the adjectives I taught in the previous class with naru. So let's say we went into um, uh, yeah we had some of them here. Let's go with these ones here because they're very simple. So tanoshi. Tanoshi. Yeah, if you want to add naru, 
Do you know how to do that? No. That's okay. So you would go um, to say it became fun. It became fun. Tanoshiku naru. Yeah. So tanoshiku naru is to say it will become fun. If I say tanoshiku natteiru, means it's becoming fun. And if I say tanoshiku natta, means it was, it, be, it became fun, sorry. It became fun. Tanoshiku natta. Can you do it for this one? Sumaranai? Sumaranai. Boring. What do you change the the e? Sumarana. Sumarana. Yes. Yes, that's right. Tsumarana kunaru. See? The thing with this verb is it already has nai in it, so it kind of makes it longer, but tsumara nakunaru. Try this one, omoshiroi. You almost got it. Omoshiroku, what? Omoshiroku naru. Yes. Omoshiroku naru. Omoshiroku naru. It's going to become interesting. Omoshiroku natta. It became interesting. Omoshiroku natta. Omoshiroku narimashita. Okay, sure. No problem. Oishi mazui. Okay, so yeah, I want yeah. Okay, so let's just try a couple more. So try what about the oishi. Do you know how to do it? Oishi kunaru. Oishi kunaru. Oishi kunaru. Yeah. Yeah, umai. You can do for umai. Umai, umai kunaru. That's right, umai kunaru. So there you go. So now you have the idea. Umai kunaru. You're going to become better at it. <laughs> this, this, yeah. He's also my host with the local family. There are some. There are some. He's the Japanese guy. Yeah, he's the our school. But I have no chance to meet him. <laughs> All right. Oh, he's a Japanese guy in the school? It'd be nice if he came here. We should have uh, Japanese people here. He's, uh, he, uh, he has tests, so maybe uh, next week I, I, I will have a chance to meet him. Sure. Like, uh, I have to schedule <laughs> new classes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I have to schedule new classes. Uh, I'll send you an email with the new classes uh, starting next week. So, I guess. next week, uh, it's not... not uh, I don't know yet. We might be here. Okay, okay. We might not be here. Okay. Yeah. okay. So, we'll see. Okay. Yeah, there is somebody looking in there. Okay, so... Uh, okay, well, uh, did, it, did you check the Facebook page ever? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you saw, yeah, there was some kind of, there was some videos there, you know. Um, but yeah, I was thinking that um, the thing was with food, you know, in Japan is actually there's a lot, yeah. a lot of videos. Uh, that, that looks very, very, very <laughs> but it's perfect. And uh, some of them uh, also like You know, speaking of food in Japan, my wife was telling me that now the tradition in Japan, or the tradition, like the trend now is all the moms they've been making um they've been making obento with uh, obento yeah it's actually oh, 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 oh. 
Yeah, this is pretty important in Japan. Open. Yeah. Yes, my wife is Japanese. Oh, yeah, yeah. But I don't think she, well, she does a little bit, but. So basically, they're very into this obento. I think, I think uh, she's very good at it. Yeah. Yeah. I think Japanese girl is very good at it. They love to make obento, which is basically. Um, it basically is a, is a it's a food box or lunch box, yeah, yeah. and they usually like to put like a bunch of things together. So okay, let's. I want to write it in Japanese here. Yes. Yeah, so the recent trend is to make things cute, like you said. So. Yes. <laughs> exactly, they have kawaii culture there. So they like. So this is like a regular, like this is what obento looks like in yeah. general. It's you know, it's very good food, right? Like yeah. you have like the rice usually. You have a, maybe some a plum, then you have some vegetables and yeah. meat, uh, yeah. something like that. Sometimes it's mostly vegetables. You can make it all different kinds. <laughs> So these are very nice, like, and they have like really good bento you, you, uh, at the train station. Like uh, it's, it's a little <laughs> bit different. <laughs> she makes some nice stuff though too. Like she, she doesn't always prepare it this way though. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, like like you were saying, kawaii. kawaii, kawaii. This is a very, <laughs> yeah. See this, like this, this is a trend. But you know, at one point this was like something you know. Someone did sometimes, you know, it's just like, uh, how do I say that as a uh, kind of like an occasion, like not, not often, right? But now, nowadays, it's become almost like a standard where like every mother has to every day yeah. <laughs> create like cute food. Oh, how, how, how they can these things? Yeah, what? Like you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I've seen pictures of those stuff. Like, I, yeah, my wife was telling me. <laughs> yeah, my wife was telling me now in Japan, like, you know, doing it like cute like this with little characters and stuff for the bento, the, the lunch boxes, has become like standard. Does your wife do that for you? No, no, she doesn't do that for me. <laughs> She'll make me food sometimes, but that's about it. They go maybe do that for them and each other to change their bento to keep someone. Maybe that's very good. It's too cute to eat. Is that good for themselves? Maybe you are. But, but what I was saying was that you. Sorry. I wouldn't be able to eat it. I wouldn't be able to eat it. Because <laughs> it's like, I wouldn't want so to you're gonna eat it. Gonna eat it. You're going to eat it. You're going to kill it. Actually, I noticed that this kind of thing was. I don't know who started it in Japan, but they've always. They've definitely had this for a while for kids. Kids' food. Like, eat a kid's. Kids meal at a restaurant, yeah, 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 yeah. like they have the yeah, family yeah. family less res family uh, restaurant. Like the, um, the rice. Family less, yeah. And then maybe have some toys. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. So, but then what happened is, I guess for some reason, it's this became a standard. Like this game became so popular that now every big. single day, <laughs> mother, all over Japan has to make this work of art only to be eaten. It's a little bit ridiculous. My wife thinks it's a bit ridiculous. You know, if it was like once in a while, I think it's fine. And that's how it started, really. It's only recent times it's gotten so insane. This is pretty amazing. Totoro. Not this Totoro, you're right, because this has other movies too. Spirit Away, yeah. Chihiro, or whatever. Yeah. So, yeah. And but see, my my wife, she actually made me, uh, or which she makes recently a lot, which is actually really good. And she learned it from. Uh, well, there's this famous celebrity in Japan. His name is uh, Kimu, Kimura Takuya. Takuya. He's actor, actor and model in Japan. He's not very good at singing or or acting, but he's he's done both. He's old, but even though he's so old. He looks super young still. Like he still looks. Let's go Genzai. Yeah, 
Genzai. And Genzai, which means uh, now, present yeah, day. Yeah. So he looks, I think, he looks pretty much the same. Like, like, even now he looks like this, like, like thin and like you know, like he's in good shape and stuff. Whereas like his other, like he was originally in a band called boy band called Smap. And if you if you look them up, you'll see that all the other guys look older. They all look old now. Only him looks like that Smap. Okay, so these are old pictures though. You see it as a boy band and all that. Yeah, they don't really have recent too many recent pictures. Anyway, they they haven't aged as well. Let's just put it that way. So what lacking what much? Uh, not particularly, yeah. but <laughs> what she learned about was his um way of making rice, which is part of what keeps him young. Is he what he's making brown rice, oh. and what he's doing it? Um, yeah, I'm on my Twitter page because I'm told being told to follow Jesus Christ by Twitter. Okay, oh, Jesus Christ account. The yeah, so basically, uh, we go back here. Yes, I'm being suggested by to follow God by uh, Twitter. Twitter is telling me follow God. Okay, if I can just go to the next image. Yeah, there is, but it's like not working. Okay, let's just click on this whole thing. So I have a picture of some food she made me I wanted to show you. I have to go down far blah 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 this is too long. Um I think did I have did I put it on my uh I post way I'm such a social media whore. Okay here you go. So underneath this is actually rice and the rice is uh she made it over, in this case it was over 39 hours, but you can go for longer, like sometimes we go as long as like 70 hours or something. What? This and basically what you do, what is this? yeah, what you do is you cook your brown rice and she puts also azuki beans in there and you cook it the normal way and then you leave on your rice cooker, you know the rice cooker, like the Asian one, and you just leave it on warm, keep warm, and you leave it on keep warm for like days. What's in that evaporator? All the water's in that No, it actually what it does is it ends up softening all the... Because the brown rice, if you just cook it normal, like normal rice, and it's too hard. It's too hard, it, it doesn't taste as good because it's hard, and also your body can't digest it very well. So like this thing? So what she does, yeah, this over several hours, at least... You should do it at least a couple hours. Usually only it's one hour for rice, right? But it's... Yeah. You want it like at least two to three hours, and... You can go up longer, like you go up like three days sometimes. <laughs> and then it's very soft, and the rice becomes very soft, but it's still brown rice, and you're getting all the vitamins now. Your body can absorb it, and it's easier to eat, it tastes yeah. better. Yeah. And it's part of what like keeps him young. And then all the stuff on top here is like she makes like different like sort of pickles and different things like that. And like uh, we have kimchi as well over there, and she also makes a seaweed kind of thing that my yeah. daughter really loves seaweed which is I guess it's a good, that's good. Yeah. it's good she's like yeah I want seaweed you know and broccoli and like yeah that's great she's it's way better than asking for chocolate and candy and stuff <laughs> we've got them on a health run here yeah so wait so uh, yeah so yeah that, that was um, Obento Obento here that we were talking about, right? Obento. Uh, I could just add it to this other text file here. And uh, what will you do to the Obento? Or if we should mention that verb. Obento. Obento. I don't think you know. Do you know? Taburu. <laughs> Taburu means to eat. Yeah, taburu. Taburu. So, um, when do you eat? You eat at Oshokuji. Oshokuji, that's the when you eat, the ta eating time. Just a general word for eating time, Oshokuji. And like I mentioned before, there's Asa Gohan, Ohiru Gohan, and Ban Gohan. 
えそれなつお食事えなつお食事の時での時でご飯を食べる I'm gonna use、um, お弁当お弁当お弁当を食べるお食事の時でお弁当を食べる。We can use 食べます to be polite. So, お食事 is like the type of time, eating time? Yeah. Or eating situation? <laughs> no, toki is literally time. で、お弁当 is the lunchbox. お食べます means to eat. お食事の時でお弁当を食べます。So we eat the lunchbox, the bento,、yeah. at the eating, at the eating, when it's time to eat.、Yeah. Exactly. So well, here we're going to get more specific. お昼、ご飯、で、so、we can make this proper ご飯、characters. Doesn't matter. お昼、ご飯で、お弁当を食べました。Yeah. I ate. A bento at lunchtime. Yeah. Oh, here we go. And then, oh, bento, oh, tabe mashta. Nani tabe mashta ka? Tabe mashta ka? Nani o? Nani o tabe mashta ka? Is a question. So, do you know what this question means? Nani o tabe mashta ka? You should probably you know what nani is. Yeah, sorry? Yeah, what did you eat? What did you eat? Tabemashita, because it's past. Tabemashita ka. Nani o tabe te imasu? Nani o tabe te imasu ka? I don't know if you remember that when we were conjugating verbs here,、uh, there is. This was an important one, by the way, Martin. Naru. It'll be in the video, so you'll catch it there. Naru, narimashita. Narimasu. Natta. It means to become. Naru. Become. And you can use it a lot in combination with other verbs to create new words and so on. Or you can use it with, I was showing earlier, combining adjectives with naru. You became, you became that feeling. Let's say,、uh, Ureshi, Ureshku natta, I became happy. Ureshku nara, I'm going to become happy. Okay. So here, if you see, hitte iru, you know, so hiku is the pull, right? Hiku. Hikimashita means I pulled. Hitte iru is, do you know? It means I'm pulling, like I'm pulling right now. If it was polite, it's h i t t e i m a s Yeah, I'm going to add English and、uh, I'll do that as well. Good idea. Thanks. So, taberu.、Uh, uh, so, yeah, so in this case, I'm saying, nani o tabet. Tabet. Sorry, there's a mistake there. There you go. Nani o tabete i m a s u ka? Nani o tabete i m a s u ka? Tabet. Sorry, this is kind of wrong. Sorry, it's like this. Because it's a different verb, so it has to be like this. Tabete i m a s u ka? Nani o tabete i m a s u ka? Actually, this is、uh, conjugated similar to suru, like I showed you earlier. Like shite iru, or shite i m a s u So tabete i m a s u is the present. So, nani o tabete i m a s u What are you eating right now? Nani o tabete i m a s u ka? Nani o tabete i m a s u ka? Exactly. So, this could basically be the response. Tabete i m a s u So, it's actually really good in Japanese if you can do that. If someone asks you a question in a certain form and in a certain tense, if you can reply to them, In the same form, same tense, it's usually the best. So in this case, Nani o tabete i m a s u ka? 
Ohiru Gohan de. Oh, sorry, we don't have to say this, Ohiru Gohan. We just say. O bento o tabete mas. Oh, sorry. Nani o tabete imas ka? O bento o tabete imas. Okay, so the question. Nani o tabete imas ka? And the answer. O bento o tabete imas. So here we have the exact same form of the verb, right? Tabete imas ka? Tabete imas. So it's a perfect response. You know? I mean, you could respond in a different way and say the same thing, but this is the best way, yeah. probably. So yeah, we're, just, we're going to be done in like five oh, minutes. We have a meeting here, I believe. In like three minutes, we'll be done. Okay. Okay. No problem. So yeah, so in, in most quick questions like that, you want to have that kind of answer if, if possible. I mean, technically, if someone's asking you, and let's say someone asked you this way, Nani o tabete iru? Nani o tabete iru? Then maybe you don't even have a ka there. Nani o tabete iru? O bento o tabete iru yo? You know, it's if you're replying in the same form. But let's say the person's in a higher level than you and you're talking down, you probably want to reply to them politely anyway. Nani o. I mean, you might, they might not even use the nice. Even the word taboo is a bit polite. You can use ku instead. Ku, which uses the same character here. But this is like, you don't use ku unless like you're, you're being really casual. So you're, you're kind of almost talking down. Like if you're telling somebody eat, like ku, ku e or something, you're, you're, it's like you're telling a dog, you know? So maybe you'd have some like, let's say your boss, Who's pretty looking? He's pretty high level, and you're like just some peon or something. And nani o nani o It's not kind of not very nice. But they're asking you, what are you eating? And then you would say, o bento o tabete imas. Would they see that they are a foreigner? Would they forgive like? That's good for now.